Party! Party! Hello, Jack Kay. Hey, oh. my, my dog Glenn is has his high heels on and is making all the noise on the hardwood floor. Sir, oh. do you want to join the party or do you want to leave the party? There's no in-between. <laughs> Let's go, brother. Let's get up here. Come on, Bean. Come on. <gasps> oh, I'm... A... <gasps> Glenn! Oh, hey, well, Glenn! Glenn! I am the sweetest man. Oh, what a little cutie. I love it. I should shut that door so you don't see my candy corn ass kitchen, but you know what? I don't have the energy. Oh, that's beautiful. You know what? I just went on a glow marathon. And so that just sprung me back to the eighties again. Well, I mean, I think it's even seventies, but listen, it's not a point of pride. It was here when I got here again, energy issues, not really worth it to me to move it. That's fair. I wasn't going to judge you for it. Now that you highlighted it, a little bit of judgment. But... Feel, honestly, feel free. You want to no. hear, I'm ready for more judgment. I'm about to crack open a kombucha. I'm giving you all the hits today. I can't. <laughs> my, my, farm, I... my farm to table kale is being delivered. Just kidding. I can't judge you too much on the booch because I used to homebrew back when I lived on the East Coast. And uh, I'm not, a, I'm not proud of it. You can't ever judge anyone for anything then. <laughs> you home brewed kombucha you lose your license you lose your your judging credentials and you can only be judged i can't even rate movies now people are like <laughs> yeah yeah i mean they were like I, I weren't can't... you that guy that home brewed you're like yeah they're like it's over buddy <laughs> nah. yeah didn't you keep like 10 scobies in your fridge <laughs> yes i did yeah. that's yes fine. i did yeah. Uh, well, Jackie, welcome. What flavor is that, by the way? It looks a nice. So I just got a case of Health Aid. Okay. And I'm fucking pumped because there are all these new ones with like special shit in them. And this one is strawberry. It's the beauty one. So it's strawberry rose, biotin, and silica. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That's uh... <laughs> I-, I wish they had the face next to it with the. Uh... <laughs> that's beautiful. Oh, it's still. <laughs> They're doing it right. She's is it awesome. effervescent? It's effervescent, and it's going to give me just the jolt I need. <laughs> Amazing. That's what I, oh, gosh. I was going to, so, by the way, my name's Stefan. It's nice hey, to Stephen. officially meet you. Some people get Stephen because of the phonetically ambiguous spelling of my name. Sure. But sure. Uh, my brand of homebrewed kombucha was going to be Effer Stefan. Stefervescent. Oh, Stefervescent. Yeah. yeah. Effer Stefan Stefan Effer Steffer Vessen to Effer Stefan, which was gonna be? Uh it was gonna be uh, Steffer Vessent. I think Steffer right. Vessent. That feels right. Yeah, yeah. Uh or Bubbly Boy. Cause I Bubbly I'm Boy a... is really funny, but it's you're you're kind of asking for it with that. <laughs> That's putting me even lower on things that I can judge after calling my Well, I think if you call something bubbly boy, you yeah, you you have no credentials you lose them. That is very true. Oh, man. Well, Jackie, I'm really excited to have you on a comedy okay. advice podcast, which is an advice podcast with comedy. But if you think that a person needs what a comedy advice podcast is explained to them, then I'm worried about that person. Like if, if someone's like, what is Oh, you're doing a comedy advice podcast? What what does that entail? Is I would be worried about that person is all I'm saying. So it's wild that you, that you, that you explain it. Surprisingly, there are people that do get confused because I have so many comedians on here. People think that it's advice about comedy. Oh, as opposed to what? As opposed to advice with comedy where it's. Ah, I see. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I mean, well, it's... I will say here I go. The way you Please. explained it didn't make me think it was any less advice from comedians. Like mm. when you said it's a, it's called a comedy advice podcast, a podcast, the way that you said it, I still thought what I thought. Does that make sense? That does make sense. So it's a, it's an all encompassing type of thing, right? So what are we doing? What are we doing here today? We're going to be giving some advice, but first we're going to be talking a little bit about you. Wow. That and, feels great. Yes. And by, I, I had a little intro cooked up for you. 
Oh, God I... bless. Let me leave you to it. Oh, man. All right. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to a comedy advice podcast. It needs no explanation from the title. I am Stefan Satani, your host. Joining me today, very special guest. She was Melrose on the Netflix pile driving comedy drama glow she's the host and key ingredient of the netflix cooking show best leftovers ever she was paula abdul's favorite contestant on american idol season eight and she played not one but two fran dresser characters on the nanny everybody please welcome jackie tone hi everybody what up oh, hey i i i'll put a clap effect in there later because oh i feel like it needed it i mean i don't even think you have to put one in because all my fans are roaring right now I'm going to open all of my kombucha bottles so that the effervescent well, that's very bubbles. Well you should, and I will snap into all of my health aids. <laughs> ja well, Jackie, first off, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, my pleasure. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. And I have to say, I first found out about you, and then I got introduced into like the tone zone with everything that I saw. Oh, welcome. It's a beautiful place. I love wow. it here. I mean, I do get sad, but welcome. <laughs> I I first discovered you from your new show, Best Leftovers Ever, Ever. on Netflix, which Ever. was, I think it was, it was definitely trending on Netflix. And I think it was one of the top 10 viewed shows on Netflix We in were January. in the top 10 for the first like week or more, which was crazy. We were up against like Bridgerton and... Um, Cobra Kai and Queen's Gambit and people were watching our little cooking leftover show as wild. Oh man, I love the cooking show. And I have to say, I'm not usually a guy that would watch a cooking show, but ever since I've been married, I've stopped watching shows like It's Always Sunny in South Park. And now it's Britain's Greatest Bake Off and Home but Improvement Shows. Can you shows. watch It's Always Sunny in South Park and cooking shows? No, because my- there's there's no compromise in this house. I just Fair. great. You know what? I pick my battles. I may not get to choose what to watch on TV, but I get to choose what to eat sometimes. Maybe one sometimes. night. Sometimes. Some that be fair. Yeah. Okay. And it's mac and cheese every time. And I get to choose to homebrew my own kombucha, which my wife is adamantly against, but she let me do it if I get to watch every show she wants to watch. Wow. Okay. So it's trade-offs. I see. Um did you ever see the episode, The Gang Finds a Dumpster Baby? I, the, was that the one that you were in? Yeah. I saw the clip and, of you and, and Dennis getting intimate, because I definitely- rooms and banging. Yes! The, the steamy coitus scene. And it was, I mean, I remember that show. I saw that episode 10 years ago or so, and then I recently saw the clip, and I was like, holy shit, oh, that's cool. Jackie Tone. It's cool to be on a show you love. I think it's super, you know, it's super rare. As an actor, it's super rare to get any job ever. And then if you get a little spot on something you actually watch, it's really cool. Yeah. And it was so cool watching the best leftovers ever because I was just, and my wife too, we were both magnetized by the presence of Jackie Tone. Oh, that's really nice. And I have to say, so for the listeners, you might be able to explain it way better than me, but essentially it's a cooking show where there are not professional chefs, but there are home cooks that are able yeah, to- Yeah, I feel like they're somewhere in between home cooks and professional chefs. I mean, we always pinned, pitted them against each other evenly. So if it was like yes. people that owned a restaurant, three chefs in a restaurant versus one episode. And then the next episode would be like more like three home cooks or three people that have blogs, right? Like it wasn't a Michelin star guy against a lady that cooks for her kids. Right, 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 right. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Because I remember on the last episode, I forgot there was a guy from Israel that had his restaurant. Well, and then yeah, Yaniv. Yeah, that guy, that guy's amazing. Wow. And um, so, so they end up trying to repurpose leftovers. There's the first round and then the second round where you, everybody beckons your fridge and out comes secret ingredients that they have to repurpose into these Do exquisite dishes. Exquisite dishes. So yeah, round one, the cooks work with their own fridges behind them, their quote unquote own fridges, where we say something like, hey guys, it was... Uh, it was date, light, date night last night. So you have in your fridge, you've got some leftover cold steak, some chocolate covered strawberries, and you made a salad. So then these people have to work with those ingredients to cook them into 
let's call it a flavor bomb brunch or something. And then mm -hmm. in round two, of course, we back in out my fridge and then there's takeout leftovers. So there's, yes. you know, three different Mexican dishes, three different Italian dishes and the cooks choose at random. And let's say, so this one woman, and then in round two, they need to turn them into high end cuisine. So we're not specific about what they make. We're in round one, we are, whether it's like a brunch or a sandwich and a drink. And then in round two, it's just make something restaurant quality, high end. We're talking plating, drizzling, the whole nine Ooh, out drizzling. of these oh, drizzling, these takeout leftovers. Um, and it is too fun. The show is, I would say it's like Chopped meets Pee Wee's Playhouse. Like it's just a wackadoo watch and it's super funny. We just had incredible producers and writers and everybody on the show and, um, watch the shit out of the show you guys it's really fun it's yeah i agree it's super cool beyond the talking about beckoning the fridge where each time sometimes you would have to call it like here fridge and everyone here would fridge. call it and then it would come scooting along there's also i think a giant milk carton there's a giant chinese takeout box that the contestants Massive, have to go like, into foot tall chopsticks oh, yeah it's amazing. really fun i mean it's I, this term obviously is a little gag worthy, but it's true in this scenario. It really is fun for the whole family. I mean, it's just, everybody can watch it and it's not too cheesy and young for grownups and it's not too grown up for kids. I mean, it's a good fit. I'm really into it. Yeah, I agree. And I, one of the things that really hit me was the fact of trying to encourage people to reuse leftovers, which yeah. my grandma, she came from Italy and she was in this, well, she wasn't in the Second World War fighting, but she was there and they were struggling. And so she would try and repurpose everything. And I remember once we, we went and had pizza and she took the pizza crust that me and my brothers didn't eat and she made gnocchi out of it. And so, yeah. Is that real? That's real. That's yeah. wild because on the show, we had people making gnocchi all the time. And funny enough, my grandparents, actually again they didn't fight in the second world war but were jews right. so right. It, it, it did not go great for many of my um ancestors and family members and both of my grandparents luckily obviously yeah. got out because they made my mom who made me um mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that is why you know we're a big leftover family too and it's always been super important to us um not only to you know reuse what you have and to, to diminish food waste but also um even when we weren't, even when we were a family who had a little, right? Like we, we had nothing. My, my grandparents had nothing. My mom growing up had nothing. So if there was mm -hmm. a chicken in the fridge and it was nothing but bones, my mom would throw it out. Her mother would pull it out of the garbage and say, we're going to, we're going to use the bones. We have to be like this, but this is, but these are good bones. Now my childhood wasn't quite like that, but I'm from these people. Right. So it's just, it's always been in me. Yes, same. And that I've, I'm the same exact generational spot where I think my mom got hit by it harder, but I also got it ingrained into me that right. you don't waste food and you reuse what you can. And then the pizza crust gnocchi, which was delicious, just uh, is, is a memory that came up with, by the way, so many gnocchi dishes were recreated. That's from what I was actually going to say when, because, you know, I think people needed to be super creative on best leftovers ever. So it wasn't going to suffice for you to take, let's say you guys weren't feeling well last night. So you have super bland food in your fridge. You've got chicken noodle soup, applesauce, and some burnt toast. Go for it. Right. And yeah. then we also have like the staple fridge extras that they can use and all of that, but it wouldn't suffice to just throw that in a pan with some eggs and some potatoes and be like, I made a hash. I made a scramble. Right. Like, in your normal life, we obviously support that wholly. Use everything in your fridge. Use all your leftovers. Make a scramble. Make a hash. But not on our show. So these people had to be super creative. And I think a bunch of them were like independently thought of gnocchi, which is so wild. We had the one guy who made the burger and fries into gnocchi bolognese. He took the burger meat and made it. It was insane. Yes. Yeah, it was incredible. It made me feel a little less special about my grandma's ability. So I'll have to talk with her right. about being more creative yeah. next time. But it was so cool to see the types of dishes that people would take and and elevate to the next level. Oh, and yeah. It was, it was super impressive. I mean. And it was so cool. It was also talking about the judges. So there was you, Jackie Tone, extraordinaire. There was also David So, 
who is uh, he knows quite a bit about food. Also, a comedian <laughs> upbringing, which was uh, I, he is like he is he's a jack of all trades. Um, he yeah. he also sings and plays guitar really beautifully. Where you're like, oh, you were just you were just sitting on that. You were just not going to tell him. <laughs> and then he's a culinary influencer and a restaurateur, and he started a matcha company, and he's got food trucks, and he's funny as a motherfucker. I mean, just genuinely, his comedy timing is so on point. He's a special dude. Love that guy. Yeah, he's he was really cool. And then also Chef Rosemary Schrader, which was, uh, and all, you guys were just super key ingredients that really made a great set of hosts because, I mean, you didn't have the knowledge that they did, but you were also able to bring the perspective of like, this tastes funky or this tastes yeah, like, like a I booger. Know something tastes like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm also like, <laughs> texture's weird. What is that? Why does that taste like that's weird? But I also think like that's, I mean, maybe I'm just saying this because it's me, but I do think that's a perspective that's missing from cooking shows because they are sort of like, it's very bright. It needs more acid. And I'm sitting home watching going like, I don't know what the fuck bright means when it comes to food. And what do you yes. mean more acid? Like, okay, so I guess acid is lemon, but why would you put lemon? It doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> so I sort of came along as the layman and was like, I, I love food. I know what it tastes like and I can describe it, but I'm not obviously going to speak in the culinary technical terms that- right. Rosemary and David did. Right. I and I think that's absolutely essential too, because as a person that can barely cook, even though my grandma's making gnocchi and souffles and all that type of shit. Yeah. I yeah. I um I can understand if food tastes good or bad. And I feel like with art too, that's another thing where people can get really esoteric with it, but you can also be like, I don't like it or I like it. It's just it's I think with art though, too, you're like I, I often, very often, you, you see things that are critically acclaimed and people are lauding and paying millions of dollars for. And I'm like, someone drop a can of paint? I don't, what happened? Like, I don't understand <laughs> what happened. So I think like having the layman, but then on the flip side of that, right. obviously they, they know something and they obviously know what it's worth and who will buy it. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, so- Glenn is resting on my wrist. Oh, Glenn. Sweet. How old is Glenn? Glenn is about, how old are you, Glenn? With your gray beard. Um, oh, thank you. You see his little dumb snout peeking in. I think he's like seven or eight. I hope. I hope he's that young. I don't know. He's a rescue and my friends had him before me, so. Oh, man. Age is just a number anyway. By the way, I'm seeing the backsplash again, and it's reminding me of Reese's Pieces. So yeah. I am liking it, and I'm hungry. And I, I just hate I just really don't like it. But it is what it is. I moved into this apartment, and it's really cool. It's 1920s. It's just like really bungalow-y, two floors, hardwood floors. Like everything's vintage. There's like a bookcase yeah. to me right now, which I'm not going to show you because also, is this a video pod or just an audio pod, and we're videoing just a vibe? Well, I usually do vid and odd, but if you want the no, video but like, out. No, you put it out. You do both? Yeah, I do. Okay. But if you don't want me to put out video, that's fine. Don't care. Um, I put on the scary just in case. Um, anyway, there's a bed coming out of the bottom of this bookcase. So it's a giant bookcase. And on the bottom, you pull a huge queen bed out. And, it, and then it goes under the stairs. But again, there's too what? much stairs. So I'm not going to show you. It's crazy. So the apartment's a, really cool. I just the kitchen th- makes me ill. What a magical house! I love it's that. It's so magical, and there's like everything's built into the walls and stuff. But I think if I when I get a next place, I'm gonna want it to be super modern because I've been living in like little vintagey cottages for my whole fucking life, and I'm kind of over it. <laughs> yeah, my wife and I we ended up moving to Phoenix, Arizona. From we were in New York. Oh, and my God. what were you guys doing in New York? We were just working there. And she's originally from Brazil. I'm originally from here. So we were there for about eight years in Elizabeth, New Jersey. I know Elizabeth, New Jersey well. Oh, really? Yeah, my, oh. Brother, my brother lives in Nutley. And I grew up with people from the Brunswicks and Wachong. I know, I know all sorts of Jersey. A lot of oh. my friends in Hoboken. I know Elizabeth. I think my dad used to do a trade show in Elizabeth, New Jersey. I'm from Long Island, so we know Jersey. That's right. Oceanside, right? No? Yeah. nice nice yeah I, yeah we lived in elizabeth new jersey because we wanted to go to new york city rent was too high tried 
Jersey That's City. That's my friend in Hoboken. Yeah, yeah. We looked at the crime map of Elizabeth, I and mean, it looked like the city had chicken pox because of all the stabbings. It's but crazy. In Elizabeth or in the city? In Elizabeth. Lots of stabbings. Lots of stabbings in Elizabeth? Yeah, lots of rent. crime. That's why that rent is so low. People yeah, get exactly. knifed. Jesus Christ. Yeah, we paid we paid a thousand dollars a month for our rent, but uh, I paid I, I paid two thousand a month for a tiny room that bare the bed touched three of the walls, three of the walls. Uh huh. And I paid two thousand a month, and I had no windows, and it was downstairs, and there was a bathroom down there that was filled with mold. And that oh. was in, that was in 2002 so that room would probably be $4,000 now. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Crazy. We we did have some mold in our in the main area but that was just my kombucha. So it was and then a you controlled just, scenario. Then you stabbed it. Yeah. Yeah, and you were I, like I feel like the popular thing to do to anything here in Elizabeth is put a fucking knife through it. Let's go. <laughs> Come at me mold. <laughs> Who's bubbly now, bitch? Yeah, so, bitch. you know, um, anyway. <laughs> still, back... still, you, still you somehow. Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. Somehow the answer to who's the bubbly boy is always going to be you. Yeah, it's it's me. I wish I could fit that in a vanity plate because I just, I feel like bubbly the bubbly boy. Boy, you could. B, <laughs> B-U-B-L-Y-B-Y. Oh, no. B-B-L-Y-B-O-Y. That's eight. Oh. Because BBLY oh. can't be anything other than bubbly. That's true. BBLY, BOY, BBLY, BOY. Even have an extra. Anyway, oh what are, who are we that, advising? Who were we? So we're going to advise the internet. We've got some questions from that fans have sent in from Reddit, Yahoo Answers, all across the internet. And we're going to answer them. Did, and so the comedy part of the pod is that we do not answer them for real, we answer them jokingly. That's the main idea. However, as the guest, this is your brand. You get to do it however you want, Jackie Tone. So you can be bubbly. You what can be serious. What if I just have great advice? I figured you would. So I feel I like I might. I I feel like you would. I I might not. I mean, listen, look, Bette Midler. Oh. And then that's a glow calendar made from pictures that Chris Lowell took on set. Oh my gosh. I, I did want to ask really quickly before Please we got do. into the advice Please about do. glow. Cry. Please do make me cry. Because oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I <laughs> should, I just, my wife and I, we, we hadn't watched glow before leftovers. And so we started watching it and went on a spree, tried to do a quick glow job. And sure. we went through the seasons and it was absolutely phenomenal. Your character Incredible. And, and your character's piece on when you had the Seder made goosebumps, goose pimples, as Rosemary Schrader would say, right. come up all across both my wife and my body. So oh, it was. Thank you. Yeah, that was a, that's a special show. I mean, for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's gone now, but goddamn COVID, but it's really a special show. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I loved hearing about, cause as I was trying to do my research and get in the, the tone zone, I was also hearing about those, how great the writers were oh. and they were taking moments. I know you had just mentioned a little bit ago about how your grandma was a Holocaust survivor. And you talked about on the show um, that the writers heard about your experiences and as well as your, oh my gosh, Ellen. I forgot. Ellen's we'll experience. Jenny. Yeah her experiences as well escaping from cambodia and rid it and then yeah. they and then they knitted our stories together because our characters were best friends and here are these two girls who look nothing alike sound nothing alike act nothing they're they're not from this anywhere near each other and here they are connecting on the inherited trauma of their families escaping genocide and this isn't just two characters on TV doing this. This is two women whose actual families experience this. I mean, it's it's so it's true. It's it's really profound. I don't. I can't think of. I mean, I haven't seen every show, but I I can't think of any other another example where, you know, people's 
actual human life experience and history is, you know, memorialized, mm-hmm. immortalized on television like that. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's a special show. Yeah, it was really beautiful. And I mean, I, the writers, it seemed like they also yes. had, when you guys went through training and you guys talked about some of the silly things or funny things that happened, they also incorporated that into the show yeah, as well. Yeah, it was well, wild because, you know, cool. we did four weeks of wrestling training before every season. So we didn't have stunt doubles, right? So we did our own stunts the whole time. So if you see me body slamming Ellen Wong, that is my tiny body body slamming her even tinier body. Um, and you know, all the wrestling from the running the ropes to the schoolboys, the crucifixes, body slams, suplexes, like we learned to fucking wrestle. It's insane. Um, and I think, you know, um, when our showrunners and writers would hear about what kind of stuff happened to us in the ring and training, they would always incorporate it into the show. Bye Glenn. That's super cool. The, and, and it was cool too. You also, one of the things I was going to say about Best Leftovers Ever is at the end of each episode, you would sing a song. Yeah. Which, an, another, another entry point into another channel of Jackie Tone where I didn't realize you were a singer either. Your music is incredible. Thank Obviously, you. American Idol season eight, you were in like top 20, 24. Ish. I know they yeah, it was didn't a really weird. have numbers. Yeah, it was a weird season because they had like this wild card and a bunch of us came back and it was a top 36. But then if you went to the wild card, you were top 24, but then they cut 12 people at once. It was a weird season, but yeah. And and then you also got to sing on Glow as well. I think there was like a music video type well, that thing. That was a thing that like our writers, right? Like you just said how, you know, they would really listen to us and they knew who we were and they knew that, you know, Kate Nash obviously is a fucking actual rock star and that she and I are musical. And so they just put it in the show and they were like, cool, let's make, what are we going to have Kate Nash on our show and not have her make music? That would be insane. And I think they, you know, not to that level, but felt similarly about me. Like Jackie makes music and sings and plays instruments. Let's have her do it on the show. Make over, make oh. me over. You know what's funny about, um, I guess skill sets is a weird way to put it, but you know, a lot of the time on shows is the opposite of glow, right? They see what we can do and they have us do it. For example, Shakira, who played uh, Yolanda, but then the junk chain replacement, mm-hmm. she, she used to do backup dance. She used to back up uh, dance for JLo and she's like a sick, sickening dancer and she's Nicaraguan. And so instead of making her character like another show would do, they'd be like, okay, like a Latina girl, let's make, doesn't matter. We can make her Mexican. We can make her whatever. But on Glow, they were like, no, she's Nicaraguan, make her Nicaraguan. And the same thing with Ellen Wong. They were like, no, let's make her Cambodian. Like it was important to them to have people play their, true selves instead of like, you know, ch- changing it up for the narrative. Anyway, what I was going to say about, um, mm-hmm. oh wait, I lost my train of thought. I was saying Shakira and dancing. Mm-hmm. I was going to say another show. Oh, nice. Another show did the opposite. Um, like where Glow finds out everything about us and they love that and then they utilize it. Yeah. Um, I did a show years ago where it was called Memphis Beat and it was a Jason Lee show that took play it was like on TNT or something and I played this character which is the funniest name ever Delala Boswell and I was this like drunk southern girl who just was sort of like train smoking cigarettes she was sort of just like a piece of shit and <laughs> um, she just was like super heavy and just dramatic and it was awful for her and um they I thought I got the part because at the end of the episode She sings. She's like this like gritty kind of Janis Joplin singer. She plays Mm -hmm. instruments. So casting knew that about me. And so I auditioned and I got the part of this acting role. And then I'm like in the middle of production. And I feel like I don't remember how it unfolded, but I, I think I either read the script and inquired or I was like in a product in the table read or something and overheard them trying to figure out like who they were going to cast for the voice double for me so someone could sing at the end mm-hmm. and I was like do you guys I thought I was singing at the end and they were all went you can sing and I was like oh my god oh I thought this was <laughs> idol I was like oh I thought that's why I got the part because the 
like I figured the acting was secondary and it was the number one thing was that like they needed a gritty real singer who could play instruments and I was like I thought that's and they, they were like we had no idea you could sing so I sent them a couple of videos and they sent them to the music supervisor and he was like great let's fucking go but they had no idea I could <laughs> sing like like it's 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 like that the head isn't talking to the feet it's just like the middle of the body is getting ripped open because the people on the two ends of the thing are not communicating. And that was the on glow. It was the opposite. It was like, everybody was working together to make the best possible thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you could definitely see that. And the show, I didn't know that about um, junk chains replacement, but, and, and the actress's abilities for dancing. But I saw once I heard your stories oh. and we were watching through it and I saw her dancing and her teaching Alison Brie and doing the novelty act. Where they like, were doing there's the dancing. no way like, this girl's not a professional dancer. Like they didn't, <laughs> just get you think they just got lucky that this girl, <laughs> where they, I'll tell you where they did get lucky. Brittany Young is supposed to be like the one who plays Carmen Machu Picchu. She's oh, supposed yeah. to be, she never wrestled a day in her life. She's not, but she's, sick she's so fucking strong and so naturally incredible at wrestling like you would think she had a lot of training before the show yeah nope nope does all her own stunts did everything and she didn't even have a body double the rest of us had body doubles like because Allie and Betty especially had body doubles because they did all their own they did all their own stunts but if they needed to get a shot more than three four times the mm -hmm. girls were going to get concussions if they kept throwing each other around. I mean, oh, we're not yeah, for sure. wrestlers, we're actresses. And obviously for there's sure. no, that's just dangerous at a certain point. So at a certain point, they had our um, our trainers come in and, and do stuff for them if it had to be done like five, six times. Um, but Brittany didn't. But Brittany just had to do everything herself, always. She's amazing. Oh, God, just like my wife. But yeah, yeah that's... Yeah. That's, just like your wife. I'm not sure why, but just like your wife. Has to do everything herself always. That's, oh, that's I'm what, so sure. I'm that's so what sure. She, you're over that's, here too. You're so busy putting those little foam squares on your walls and brewing kombucha. She, what else do you have time for? She actually did that too. Yeah. I, I messed up. They didn't look level. So. And also she had to approve it anyway, based on what you've told me about her. So she you may as well just have her do it. She did. I mean, she gave, she let me have one of our bedrooms as a, a studio sure. and slash office but we also didn't know what to do with all the space we got when we moved here from We're elizabeth like, new jersey yeah exactly you came from like stab city new jersey where you had 10 feet of space for four grand now you probably have a whole house for a thousand bucks pretty much yes oh, oh. Um, well this is, this is my i'm happy for you face <laughs> so bubbly jackie i love it thank you i mean i don't have to be here i could i could also leave even that's fair that is fair. I mean, that, that that's the bad part is I live in Phoenix, Arizona, where I practically I know. Phoenix know. is okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's it's definitely good right now. The weather is much better than Elizabeth, New Jersey. So I mean, I fun. feel everything's better than Elizabeth, New Jersey. It has a, a soft, polluted place in my heart because... Yeah. The, just the characters there and I feel like in Elizabeth, New Jersey, you have, you get like a similar smell that you get in New York, but none of the excitement and perks of New York. So granted it's cheaper, but it's like, it's Elizabeth, New Jersey. That is it's true. A haircut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're speaking to, I, mean, I had a razor so fade long. before the pandemic. Do you, do you, by the way, do you, uh, last question before we get into the advice, do you, um, get any, you look like certain people, celebrities yeah, or anything? I do. Um, when I had bangs, I got chased around, told I was Zoe de Chanel. Okay. I could see then that. I get, um, I don't really anymore, but when we were both coming up, I got Lizzie Kaplan all the time. Okay. I don't know um, who that is, but. She was like the goth girl in Mean Girls. She's she's very successful. Oh, um, okay, okay. And then I get, I think just basically Zoe Deschanel and Lizzie mostly. Katy Perry sometimes, but that was again with the bangs. You don't get Jennifer Aniston? Uh, no, funny enough. Uh, maybe I have, but not generally, no. Okay. I used to get Deborah Winger when I was a kid and she was uh, doing stuff. Oh, okay. I used to get Napoleon Dynamite when I was a kid. So I get that. 
Thank you. I like it. I get that John Hader. Is that his name? Yep, that's him. Yeah. Some John Hader vibes. I'm here for that. Oh, appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, well. My brother spitting image of of John Hader, but Thank my brother's you. not here, so oh. we're gonna stop talking about him. Great. All right, going into the advice, Jackie. So right. before we answer some questions, I usually like to get centered and inspired with an inspirational quote. Oh my God, great. Before, before I present mine, I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes. Oh. Um, that they like. Wow. Would have been as simple as emailing me to prep me for that. Would have well, been that's as, the fun of it. Would have taken a simple... Um, let me think. Inspirational quotes. I mean, I explicitly don't because I have trouble. I have trouble with shit like that because it's like so earnest. It's embarrassing where it's like live, laugh, love. And like all those signs that hang in home goods, they're sort of just like, mm. they sort of make me, they sort of make me more sad than they do. You know what I mean? Where I'm like, Oh, I don't, that just feels disingenuous and cheesy to me, but I feel like this isn't really inspiring, but I do think of it all the time when I'm like, not when I'm thinking of not going for something, I do think of you miss all the shots you don't take all the time. Mm. That's a, that's a uh, guest favorite. I it's like a guest that one. Yeah. yeah. I feel that like is a good I one. have them on my phone, but um, while you tell me yours, I'll try and find a better one on Instagram. Oh, he's looking good. Okay. Um, all right. Well, yours. The, the one that I have, it's actually not by any person whatsoever. It's actually by a robot and it's called Inspire Robot. So what it does is it actually uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man or woman and just integrate them for a beautiful inspirational quote. Ready. Ready? All right. See if this one makes sense. Sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a miss. Inspire Robot this week says, if you actually want to improve fun, try not to smile. Hmm. Hmm. Is it supposed to not make sense? Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. This is AI at its best. So I think there's some tweaks and upgrades that need to be made. Some patches that need if to be let in. If you don't, if you, sometimes the best way to have fun is not to smile. If you want to improve fun. Yeah. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like it was translated onto a t-shirt from Japanese. Oh my God, like that's very go true. To Japan and then they, I mean, I've never been, but like when you go to a store, like my favorite shit ever, I'm obsessed with Japanese culture, Japanese art and toys. And I've always wanted to go there. It's my number one place. And when I was younger, I would always collect things that were written in Japanese, but then translated to English. And like the translation didn't quite work. Mm. that's what your quote sounds like oh it does it does yeah it's like something from the bible that was translated 13 times that it just yeah. doesn't it doesn't make sense anymore like don't eat shellfish okay okay well fail on inspire about that time you don't you don't miss a hundred percent of the shots you take or something i think but moving on to the question sounds like you just put my perfectly good quote through your auto robo quote and came out with whatever you just said that was a bubbly boy original actually that was a bubbly boy og <laughs> don't take or some fucking bullshit that's your okay cool perfect that's it yes that's me all right now we've got chips okay i'm ready let's keep going all right so this first question is found by our fan l thank you l she found it on reddit it says what to do with stuffed animals so I'm a 17 year old female. And to be honest, I have way too many stuffed animals, maybe 40. It's not like I'm playing with them, but each one reminds me of a separate happy memory. So I have a really hard time giving them away or anything. They are all currently in my closet on a shelf, but I feel like it looks really stupid and immature. Now I have no idea what to do with them. I'm very much considering just putting them in storage bins under my bed. But for some reason, I just feel so bad doing it because I feel like they have feelings. Any idea of what to do? Wow. What's the girl's name? I know Elle found it, but we don't know the name of the person who wrote it. I, I do not. Wow. Because I was going to be like, well, Stacy, because her name is like invariably Stacy. That like sounds like a Stacy move. Yeah. Um, I mean, listen, I, 
this is such an easy one and I don't have a funny answer. Obviously get the fuck rid of them immediately. You can keep a few. If you have 40, like you can keep a few. Like here, for example, I don't know if I'll be able to reach it, but I'll try. Yeah, I could reach it. Yeah, I could reach it. Oh, Stefan, I forgot to put headphones in. Have I ruined this whole thing? They're sitting right next to me and I forgot to put them in. I didn't want to say anything, but it is ruined now. We'll have to start wow. over. Okay. Well, I, no, no, no. I unfortunately, I unfortunately don't have the time, but take care. Sorry, I ruined this. <laughs> um, so like, for example, here's Cherry from Pee Wee's Playhouse oh. and her mouth moves and her eyes move. So she's one of my prized possessions. So you don't get rid of Cherry. But if you've got 40 weird American Girl dolls from when you were seven on your counter and you're almost 18 and you should be getting that cherry pop girl. No, that's gross. <laughs> but like, you know, I feel like at a certain point, you know, just, I, it's interesting that her option was like, I don't know what to do. Should I put them under my bed? And she had like, there was so many questions in there. It's hard to answer just one. Cause one of the Fair. questions was like, should I, they look weird and immature. Yes, but that's okay. I mean, I have a lot of toy and youngy shit in my apartment, but it's one of the options is take 35 of them and put them away. And then the five that you like can be sort of mixed in with maybe things that are, I, I wouldn't say more age appropriate, but I'm sure there are things that are more 17 year old like, and obviously you're feeling that way if you're asking the question. Um, my actual advice is donate all but a few. Um, and then if you can't do that, obviously put them in a bin because they don't have the idea that they might have feelings is, is, a, is, a, is a question for a different podcast. I mean, that's, that's a different, like, Hey, I'm 17 and I have too many toys. That's one question. And then like, I can't put them in a bin because they have feelings is like next level. And that's, I, I'm not, I, I, that's, I'm, that's out of my pay grade, baby. That's why I feel like Toy Story was not that great of a movie for kids because I felt a deep emotional attachment to my toys. And so there was a point. What was that? How old are you? I am 32. Oh, you're young. Okay. Because a third Toy Story came out when I was an age that like, that didn't affect me. So I was like, <laughs> you were 30, like, this is, I was 37 when Toy Story came out. <laughs> no, but I mean, I wasn't a kid. I wasn't a kid. I probably, at least in middle school or something. So it wasn't like, I, I yeah. didn't feel like my, to like, unless you're, how old are you, unless you're five. I was probably 12 years old. Cause I'm, I'm not that much younger than you are. I know, but you're, I mean, you're, you're younger, but like, I just feel like, it, unless you're really little, like did, I mean, I'm not being, I'm not being a dick, but like, did you no. believe in Santa until you were super older too? Santa's not real. Yeah, I, I think oh, about... Paul, oh, hello, U.S. government? <laughs> <laughs> so I think I believed in Santa until, shit, maybe five, six. So it wasn't right. that long. So, so when you're 12, you don't think your toys have a personality. Like, I just don't... You just don't I, always, I always thought... I, well, I always chose... I had these weird things that I believed in and other things I didn't. Like, I didn't believe dinosaurs were going to come back to Earth. But after watching Jurassic Park... I was terrified of those velociraptors because they had the claws to be able to open doors. So there was that slight fear in the back of my mind. Oh, okay. With, I mean, listen, I have, I have irrational fears. Um, I am claustrophobic. That's more I have claust I'm claustrophobic, not, not wildly, but it activates in really weird ways and I can't explain them. I, um, I don't, if I am in a public place and there's a single stall bathroom, I, I won't use the bathroom because I'm afraid I'm going to get locked in. Uh, you know, I but can't it happened, breathe. It happened to me. Interesting. I can't breathe under a sheet. That makes me not be able to breathe. Yeah. It's like this weird. It's weird. It's weird. I mean, like, cause, cause of course you can, but like, yeah. and the same thing, uh, right. And the same thing with me. And like, I'm just like, I don't, and I can't tell you how many times I've been in a public bathroom. It actually, believe it or not, doesn't happen that often. In, but it has happened occasionally where like someone walks in and you're like sorry and then the bit my biggest fear is that when they leave they'll be like oh my god you didn't shut the door and then they'll slam the door and then i'll be stuck in there oh no it okay. is completely it's completely irrational but i don't really have like an otherwise super fear of small spaces like 
it comes in, it comes and goes like based on how I'm doing emotionally. I assume that if I'm like anxious or depressed or stressed out mm -hmm. about something, it activates worse. Cause it's like my brain's gripping onto something that I think I can control. That's what the shrink told me anyway. <laughs> anyway, the, anyway, this girl sounds real fucking crazy. <laughs> I, I don't see in public bathrooms. This girl sounds nuts. Doll. <laughs> I, yeah, I was going to say you could either do it one at a time, letting them go or just let them all go. No, at once. I, one at a time. <laughs> Get out of here. One at a time. That's going to take first. It's going to take 40 years. How, 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 how many one at a time. <laughs> How many per day? How many per week? What do you give me a plan? Once one a week, it'll be 40 fine. weeks. Fine, fine. But any less, any slower than one a week, I don't have the time for this. I think she's just going to have to dump them all. Cause like, how would you even get rid of it? Do you throw it in the trash or do you give it away? Well, it I feel like, if they like ha that this is another, you know what? Uh, speaking of a really nice option. If they have tags on them, and they really were just on the shelf and they were a little dusty and they weren't like things that got dirty that you slept with that your dog drooled on. There are homeless shelters where kids need toys. There are, and I'm not talking like the goodwill because then that's just the goodwill making that money. And there's a lot of questions about how they- How, how good their will is. How good their will is and how they allocate their funds. But there are straight up like something that I've been, someone told me about, if you have like extra blankets and pillows that you'd think like, cause a lot of the time the donation places won't take those. You bring them to a dog rescue or a dog shelter. Cause think about all those little pups on the, on cement, on the ground. And you can really, you know, provide them some comfort. And I think, um, and people that I know, it's funny before I was um, working as an actor, I used to clean out closets and it was always a really good way. Like I was just like an organizer for rich people. And mm -hmm. it, 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 it's something in someone's brain when they know, if you, even if they have trouble getting rid of things, when they know that it's going to a good cause, it makes it much easier for them to part with it. So the goodwill just feels like, I don't know, that's just, it's a, it's a concept. It's like, that's just gonna go in a bin somewhere. But if it's like, hey, I know you're really holding on to all those shirts and you're probably not going to wear them you know there's an organization called dress for success and you can provide formerly homeless women with outfits that they can now wear to uh get jobs right for job opportunities and it changes the narrative in their head of like well i paid a lot of money for that and it's just going to go in the garbage it's like no you're right. helping someone so right. maybe this right. little psycho can help some people <laughs> this freak yeah can help some people you know, this fucking lunatic <laughs> have a kid or two i don't know <laughs> oh god all right well i think we've we've uh given about 40 fluffy pieces of advice for that so we i'm can move hiding on. behind my knee to itch my nostril so it doesn't appear to the viewer that i'm picking my nose oh so surreptitious yeah this i barely i didn't know was flaring it? nostrils well it was a big itch i can't get it and now i'm on a podcast it's a whole thing if you if you want to Take some time. I'm but, fine. All right. All right. Last question. And then that's sure. the end of the podcast. This yeah. is uh, found by our fan, Jake. Hey, Jake. On, on the Reddit advice column again here. I've never been on Reddit. I don't even, what is it? Reddit.com. I've never even typed it. Reddit.com. That's right. Like it would be like a dot co or a dot something fucking annoying. And isn't it just a really weird interface where it's just like. It's very basic. Basic yeah. aspect, yeah. I've never, I've only seen people post about it, but I've never been like, let me go to Reddit. I don't even know. I don't really get it. I, you know what? Even though we get fans or I get fans that send in questions, I don't really get it either. It's where people put in they, a lot of gifts, a lot of- And some... then things get like upticked where it's like people thumbs up it or something. What? I'm so old. What happens? Yeah, I think it is called upticking, which also uptick sounds very negative. It's like I'm really upticked off, like yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. pissed. So I don't, know I don't know about their vernacular. It doesn't sound right with me. Yeah, Flawed. The whole thing. Yeah, the whole thing. Anyway, from Reddit, this person says, how do you quickly, cheaply, and conveniently get rid of three binders full of bookkeeping? My fiance have three binders full of old bookkeeping with sensitive information that she needs to get rid of. How can she do that in the fastest and most convenient way? She I has have, a cheap duck. 
Go ahead. No, I, no, I know the answer. I'm, I'm that excited. Oh my God. Well, th- this just shows their urgency. She has a cheap document ripper, but it only does four to six pages at a time. She estimates that summing it up to one hour per binder last summer, I barbecued parts of her bookkeeping in our simple and old charcoal grill, but it was nowhere near as fast as anyone would think. Any suggestions? Greatly appreciated. Um, barbecuing I love. So you take all the papers out of the binder, you throw away the binder, and then you pay $1 per pound at Office Depot or Staples, and they shred it for you. They have massive, massive garbage cans with a big opening at the front and a lock. So the people that work there can't go in and get your sacred papers. We all think our fucking papers are so sacred. And you, including me, because I know about this and go to Office Depot and pay them money. So funny enough, I keep having, I keep having examples to show you, but here is my bag in my closet. And these are my papers that I will be shredding, but I have good reason to shred because my identity has been stolen multiple fucking times. No get, way. And I get like, I get 10, 40 pieces of mail from Charles Schwab thanking me for starting a bank account I didn't start. So now I have taken to shredding my goddamn documents. And you take this whole bag, this probably weighs five pounds, to, to Office Depot, and it costs you five bucks. And it's, and it's done. You don't have to shred it. You put the whole bag into the garbage can and it's locked so no one can like go in and get your shit and that's it and it's cheap and it's easy and just do it and it's annoying people are like oh i'll get an at-home shredder i don't want to spend the money that's what my mom said and then she sits there and is like oh i put in one piece of paper it's clogged i forgot to take the staple out it's like a whole it's a saga every minute just fucking take it to office depot don't waste my time that's very true i also love i was just gonna have good advice and it wasn't gonna be funny I think you, yeah, well, you, you foreshadowed it with, you did have good advice and you know what? You nailed it. I was going to say, conversely for the last asker, I think the charcoal grill might be a good place if you want to get rid of those stuffed animals real fast. Oh, see, see that that's perfect. But the thing is for the binders, obviously either reuse or goodwill for those because big ass bookkeeping binders. What are you ever going to use those again for? Mm. Placemats binders how what are you gonna do cut the no garbage it might be like a good tv dinner type tray well it's gonna have those giant rings in the middle oh yeah that's true to hold your to, it's like a it's like a, um a ring holder for your utensils so you could almost or a napkin but it's way too i mean if we're talking a bookkeeping binder those bitches are like huge mm, shit that's true yeah. If you live in Elizabeth, New Jersey, you could wrap your arm around it and use it as a shield for when a you try shield to get, for when you get stabbed. To stab you. See? Full sir. All right. All right. So there's <laughs> there is some use to the binder, but only in very specific stabby locations. That's right. That is yeah. correct. All right, Jackie. Well, I feel like we're all advised out. So we're gonna end the podcast here. But before we do. First off, huge thank you for joining and thank you for all for for sharing sharing your cherry. And oh no, I don't want to say that. I'll edit that out in post. Yeah, and <laughs> and your uh your private documents and your and a little bit about you. So it's been a pleasure. Thanks, everybody. Follow me on Instagram at Jackie Tone. Yes. And I was gonna ask, what have you got going on? Where would you like people to follow you? You've also oh. got Do Ray and Me coming out There's in spring. Lots of things, baby. Um, yeah. we're writing a bunch, writing a feature with my writing partner, and we're writing a half hour like adult animated comedy. So we're just just working, trying to trying to get it all done, and then yeah, follow me on Instagram at Jackie T O H N. And Kristen Bell and I have an animated musical preschool series called Do Ray and Me coming to Amazon in May, baby. Nice. It's crazy, it's coming in May because my friend Mike Scharf and I created it in 2014, and we brought it to our production company with Kristen in 2015. We started shopping it and developing it with Amazon, I think in 16. And then they what? then they greenlit us in 18. And then we started working on it in 19, making it in 19. And now it's coming out in 21. So seven years. Oh That's my bonkers, God. Dude. That's before Glow, before everything. I had nothing going on. And me and my buddy thought of this cart- children's cartoon at a coffee shop in Silver Lake. 
how are you so because I know that uh, you have waited a long time to get yeah. a, 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 like glow and, and this show how do you have the patience for these things to I don't fully... have any patience I don't have any patience I just hustle and I just work and I don't and there's nothing else I can do right so it's like it's never even occurred to me to think about an office job or getting a day job. Like I've, I've, it's always been a grind and it's always been a hustle and I got so used to it. And like, part of me was like, cool. If I have a used car and I live in a one bedroom apartment in like an okay neighborhood where I feel safe and I make like enough money at the moment, I don't have a family to support. And I certainly didn't back then. Um, and I just was always yeah. just on the grind. I mean, I, I, I was not patient at all. Uh, I was really close a lot of times. There were a mm -hmm. lot of really sad, broke, you know, $12,000 years. Uh, and then here we are. It's wild. Oh, my gosh. Well, I, I'm so excited to see everything else you've got going on. Everybody, please follow, support Jackie. Show her some love. And, um, Do it. Yes. And Jackie, thank you again. This was an absolute blast to have you on. So my you. pleasure, Stefan. Kiss your wife on the cheek for me and say hello. <laughs> will do. Thank okay, you bye. so much. Give, give Glenn a kiss bye. on the cheek for me. Oh, I fucking will. Goodbye. Bye.